So Dr. Grannon, when you look at your, your career, what's the one thing in terms of animal welfare, welfare you're the most proud of? Well, I'm really proud of the auditing systems that I implemented for the meatpacking plants that uh, originally started with McDonald's and Wendy's. Because now you had big customers insisting on some standards. And I developed a very simple scoring system. Instead of going into a plant and saying, well, I think it's good or bad, I count. How many cattle did you stun on the first shot? How many cattle did you poke with the electric prodder? How many cattle fell down? And you're only allowed three cattle out of 100 up in the stunning area, Moon and Bellerin. You got more than three cattle moving in Bellerin, they're going to fail the audit. They had to make certain numbers. It was very simple and it resulted in a lot of change back in 1999 2000 when that was first implemented. I'm very proud of that. I'm also very proud of a lot of the uh, facilities I've designed. Yeah. Uh, in fact, half the cattle in North America are handled in my center track restrainer system. Yeah. And I, I guess when you, when you look at the future, do you, do you think there's a, lot of, there's a lot more work to be done in terms of uh, cattle handling and animal welfare? Well, uh, cattle handling, it takes constant management to keep cattle handling good. There's a tendency for cattle handling to slip back bad. Yes, there's 10, 20 percent of people that will always be good. But other people tend to lapse back into yelling and screaming and poking with prods unless you just keep monitoring it. And um, some of the big plants now, like uh, Cargill at High River, have put in video auditing where um, auditors over the, down in the states can actually look in at the stunning area and the unloading and the cattle handling area and it solves a problem of people acting good when they know they're being watched because they never know when they're going to be watched and they're scored with the objective scoring system. I remember from the, from the movie of course there was lots about uh, the, looking at the cattle's eyes and, and, and that fear and, and some of those in terms of some of the, like with the snake, uh, with the, the block sides to make sure they don't well, know that there's... Well, one of the reasons putting solid sides up is so they don't see distractions, you know, that, that people going by, trucks driving by, you know, those sorts of things. That's where it's especially important to have the solid sides. And the non-slip flooring is very important. It's also important to design your crowding pen so as the cattle come on around, they're going back to where they come from. Then you're taking advantage of that natural behavior to go back to where they come from. Mm -hmm. Um, how much of a lot, a lot of your research and some of the work you've done also also applies to things like horses? Not, not in terms of horse slaughter, but in just in terms of general handling of well, horses. Well, people ask me, you know, what helps me understand animal behavior. I'm an extreme visual thinker, and so an animal is a sensory-based thinker. It thinks in pictures. It thinks in audio. It thinks in smells. It's very much into detail. And animals uh, will associate a bad experience with something they were seeing or hearing right the moment the bad experience happened. Like there was one animal terrified of diesel-powered equipment that ran with gas engine. It was fine, but diesel was associated with really bad experiences. It's real important that cattle and horses have a good first experience with new things, like a horse trailer or going through a new set of corrals. Because if a first experience with something new like a horse trailer is bad, it's very, very easy for them to get a fear memory. And, and do you think when a lot of people that are working on ranches or working in a feed yard, they make that mistake that that animals uh, perceive danger or have developed fear based on how we do? That it's maybe not as much... Uh, well, I'm always getting asked all the time, do cattle know they're going to get slaughtered? Well, that's a question I had to answer very early in my career. And I found that the animals behaved the same way at the slaughterhouse as they did in the vaccinating shoot. If they knew they were going to get slaughtered, they ought to be a lot wilder at the slaughterhouse. They're afraid of a lot of little things we don't notice. Reflections. Gates jiggling. I was in a place the other day and this little gate just jiggled and they wouldn't walk by that. Moving water with reflections on it, uh, metal that jiggles, seeing people walk by, green gloves waving around. They tend to notice little details that we tend to not notice.